Hi, this is Colleen and today we're talking about Cushing's disease. We're going to be using a basic uh, flow map, flow chart of Cushing's. For a comprehensive understanding of the, of the material, you need to read your book, Understanding Pathophysiology, 4th edition, and your course material. This is a nice jumping off point to help you make the connections. If you have any questions about the disease process, please direct them towards your instructor. But let's get going with this. So Cushing's disease or syndrome is a result of an overproduction of cortisol. So let's let's talk about that system really quick. Chronic st stress is going to lead to the sympathetic nervous system acting on the hypothalamus, initiating the release of corticotropin releasing factor, CRF. So CRF then acts on the posterior pituitary, initiating the release of adrenocorticotropic hormone, ATCH, and that travels through the bloodstream to the adrenal cortex, the adrenal glands on the kidneys, and that stimulates the release of cortisol. That's how the system normally works. How we end up with this overproduction is through either well, several ways, but one way is an excessive amount of ATCH from either a, pitu a tumor on the pituitary or a tumor in the lung. We can also get an overproduction of cortisol without ATCH by having uh, an adrenal tumor that releases cortisol or a long term, a patient that has a long term course of corticosteroids such as prednisone can definitely lead to. Cushing syndrome. All right, so let's get started. So we have this overproduction of cortico cor cortisol, excuse me, that is going to increase catabolism and proteolysis, which is the breakdown of protein. So we're going to see muscle wasting, muscle weakness, fatigue and pain, and thin um, limbs, arms and legs. This patient are going to be um, quite stick-like. We're going to have Glycogenolysis, the breakdown of glycogen into glucose, which is going to lead to chronic hyperglycemia, which we understand leads to insulin resistance and then to type 2 diabetes. And I've included some of the manifestations of type 2, such as sugar spilling into the urine, polyuria, increased infection, because we understand that bacteria like to eat sugar. So with this long-term hyperglycemia, it's like the buffet is now open. We're also going to have prolonged healing <coughs> related to the vascular changes that come with chronic hyperglycemia, thickening of the basic membrane, poor perfusion. We'll have atherosclerosis along the same lines, which is going to lead to coronary artery disease and hypertension. This overproduction of cortisol is also going to increase our vascular sensitivity to catecholamines. And if you remember, the catecholamines are epinephrine and norepinephrine. And those are significant vasoconstrictors. So we're going to have an increase in vascular tone, leading to vasoconstriction, and again, hypertension. This is also going to increase our androgen production. Androgen is our sex hormones. So we're going to have a redistribution of fat to the central part of our body, the, sometimes referred to truncal obesity. We're also going to see um, buffalo hump, which is the deposit of fat just at the base of the neck, kind of right in between the shoulder blades. We also are going to have moon face in some of these patients. Because of the androgen production, we're going to see acne, gynomastia, which is the increase in breast tissue, which obviously is going to be more... Um, more obvious in your, your male patients, you're going to have menstrual dysfunction, hertuism, which is the growth of hair on the face and the chest. We're going to see mild virilism, and there's a really great picture of an example of an adolescent female experiencing virilism, page 474 of your textbook. And we're going to see sexual dysfunction in these um, patients as well. So cortisol also leads to a loss of collagen, and I like to think of collagen as the rebar in the cement or the concrete or the straw in the mud bricks, helping um, 
to lend support to a structure. So collagen support is the support of in our skin. So with a loss of collagen, we're going to have thin skin, which is going to lead to skin breaks and ulcerations. It's also going to lead to um, visible striae underneath the skin. We're also going to see little to no scar formation in these folks that have Cushing's. We ha are going to have a loss of support around the vessels that are going to make them susceptible to rupture. So we'll have petechia and ecchymosis will follow. Cortisol also affects the central nervous system. So you are going to see irritability, emotional labile patients ranging from euphoria to depression to psychosis. Insomnia is going to be an issue and unfortunately you see a lot of suicide um, in patients with Cushing's disease. It's very unfortunate. Overproduction of cortisol, we know that cortisol suppresses the immune system. So we're going to have an increase in infection and prolonged healing like we saw over here with the um, hyperglycemia. So cortisol, since it's a min mineral cortical steroid, it is going to increase our aldosterone. And we know that aldosterone encourages the um, reuptake of sodium in the renal tubules. So we're going to have sodium retention. And as we know, water always follows sodium. So we're going to have an increase in water retention. We're also going to see an, uh, an increase in potassium excretion because sodium and potassium are kind of that teeter-totter. If you gain sodium, you lose potassium in the kidney. So along with our water retention, we're going to see weight gain. You'll see it listed as transient weight gain as well. Um, and we're going to get an increased blood volume from this increase in O2. We're going to get an uh, increase in fluid volume, which is listed here, but is also going to cause our hypertension. And lastly, we're going to have cortisol is going to start decreasing our GI calcium absorption. So we're not going to be getting any calcium from, from our dietary intake, or very little. And we're going to have an increase in bone resorption. It's also going to inhibit bone formation. So what that means is our body is going to be taking calcium out of the bones and not being able to put it back. So that's going to lead to two things, brittle bones and um, an increase in circulating calcium. So we're going to see fractures in these patients, or an increase in fractures, vertebral compressions and kyphosis, osteoporosis, hypergalcemia from the circulating calcium, which is going to lead to renal stones. It also, uh, cortisol also interferes with growth hormone. So you could expect to see stunted skeletal growth of the long bones in children who have, have Cushing's. Okay, hopefully this was um, helpful. I'm trying to keep these videos below 10 minutes so they're easy to digest. Again, if you have any questions, please direct them towards your instructor. Review your textbook and your course material. Thanks and hope you have a good day.